everybody. This is Bill Young again, and um, I want to sort of follow up on these um, ear saver straps I've been working on. I've been making them for I don't know, four or five days now, and I started out 3D printing them, and um, it's, a, it's a very cool design. Um, I found out about it through a, um, a news post about a Canadian Boy Scout that had been making them. And it's just really neat. And I had a I have a Prusa 3D printer, so I started printing them, and they turned out really nice. But you know, it's pretty slow. It took about an hour and a half, plus or minus, to do five of them. And I thought, you know, that's just kind of I'm not going to be able to make much of an impact at that rate, even just letting it print in the background. So I started thinking that this was a um, this would be a good CNC cutting project because it would cut fast if you found the right material. And just by blind luck, I happen to have some 0.02 high impact polystyrene sheets for vacuum forming. And um, I thought I'd give a try cutting that. So, you know, I've got a video of how all that worked, and I've used double stick tape and blue, car blue um, painter's tape to hold it down. And I've cut a, a handful, of the, you know, all I have at the moment is these 12 inch by 12 inch pieces. But it turns out that it's, it's worked out pretty well. But I've gotten a bunch of questions, um, mostly from other people, but occasionally just kind of looking at it myself and thinking, you know, I'm not sure why this is like this. So I kind of want to bring up a couple of questions I've been asked and tell you what my thinking is on them. So the first is, why did you use that particular plastic and that particular thickness? And it was just because it's what I had. It was sort of the, it was on hand. I had probably 30 12 inch by 12 inch pieces of it. So that's what I used. And just by blind luck, it turned out to be worked pretty well. It was strong. It's real flexible. People, nurses and, and people in general really like it because it doesn't put pressure points on your head. It bends around really nicely. It hooks really well. Um, I haven't had any of them break yet. I haven't heard of any of them breaking. So, and um, you know, people say, well, why don't you use Lexan? Why don't you use this? Why didn't you use that? Why didn't you make it 16th of an inch thick? Why didn't you do this? Um, and it's because this is what I have. And I was happy with the way it worked. I'm gonna try some other, maybe a little bit thicker, but I don't think you wanna get too thick. Um, I just, I think the flexibility really, really helps as long as you have the strength. So that's that's the the first set. Is you know why why did I do them? Though, why did I do them out of what I did, what I have, and it's because it's what I had. Um, second one is why is it shaped like that? Why does it have the bend? Why does it do? You know why does it have this bend up part? And uh, why does it have the cutout in the middle on the 3D printed ones? And why don't I have it? And you know what about these little doohickeys here? These little hooky parts? You know mine is. You know, I've simplified it quite a bit. I'm not doing a very good job of holding this. Um, so first, I, I removed this. I think this cutout in the 3D version is just to make it more flexible. And I thought there was no reason to remove it here. And it, it gives a space for somebody to put their initials on it or draw a duck or whatever. So they would know whose is whose. Um, I don't think it needs to cut out. It, it's... It takes a tiny bit more time, not not enough time to be um, to be noticeable. But I just think having the solid part doesn't hurt. I think that this having this just sort of a, a, a filleted um, hook part instead of the ball on the end, it cuts faster, and I think it makes it easier to hook and unhook. Um, I have no scientific data behind that, but it's easy to it's easy to cut this way, and. I think the the stra it holds just as well once you put some tension on it. So I thought this was just a simpler design, um, cleaner and easier to modify. Uh, let's see that, that that angle part. I did it because I figured somebody had put some thought into the original design and they put those angled arms on it. So I didn't know enough to to not do it. I figured there was a reason for it, so I kept them in there. It may turn out after a while that you don't need those. That just a straight one with hooks on the ends works just as well. But it seems like maybe they, that was, the thought was that you could flip it, people could flip it over depending on, you know, ponytails or whatever. So I left it in there. Uh, let's see. Different sizes. Um, 
People ask about making different sizes. You know, they want two or three different sizes. So, you know, this was the original one. And I started making them a little bit longer because I did have people who asking about having them longer. And um, and I was going to make the two. I was going to do two sizes. And I think, well, this plastic is so flexible that it really kind of doesn't make sense to complicate things. So what I thought is I'd make these. These are about eight inches long. The others are about six. So I want to make them all long. And then if somebody wants to, they can adjust it to whatever size head they have, you know, whatever's a comfortable for them, and just take a pair of scissors. With thin plastic, is so good. Just nip the piece off they don't need. You know, if they want to hook it into, if the second hook works perfectly for them, just cut the, cut the other ends off and throw them away. Then they've got the size they want without having to measure and try a bunch of different ones. You know, if they decide they're always going to hook it in the last one, they can just cut these little, cut the rest of the barbs off. And, um, you know, they can customize it to fit. They're cheap enough. You know, the plastic's a couple of cents a piece, probably a, maybe a nickel, maybe. So, um, you know, they could try a couple different things. But I think this is, I think it makes more sense to make it as long as it possibly needs to be, um, you know, for the, for the person that needs, you know, either a large head or, you know, big hair or whatever. And then just modify it to fit. Cut off the piece you don't think you, the stuff that isn't useful to you anymore. So that was the, um, that's, that's my thought now, is just make them all eight inches. Maybe it'll grow at some point. After a while, maybe there'll be some people that say, you know, I really need a nine inch one. And then we'll just make them all that big. But for now, this eight inch one seems to have worked for everybody so far. Um, let's see what else. Um, so, so what's the next idea? And, um, so I got a couple of I've got I'm working on getting some four, four by eight sheets and I'm going to start cutting them out on the gantry machine on the big machine. So still 16th inch down spiral bet, so I don't have to worry about it pulling up. I've got a vacuum table on there. If um, if I have a problem, um, I'm looking at pressure feet that kind of hold the plastic down. But I can cut about 500 of those eight inch ones out of a full sheet. So a couple of sheets of plastic, you know, I can, I can generate a thousand of them in, I don't know, half a day maybe. So it's, it's, it's going to be a quick way to make lots of them without having to do all that peel in, you know, the, the, the blue tape on the back and the sticky tape works great for small pieces. But it, it's just, you know, you have to peel it off, you end up with this, all this kind of gooey sawdust pieces. Um, if you're cutting big sheets and want to do, um, still need to hold it down with something, the, the application tape that the vinyl guys use, it's like real wide rolls of masking tape kind of material. And that stuff, um, putting that on the back of the plastic and then using the double stick keeps that goo from transferring. So, you know, that's something if you've got a, a desktop or a desktop max and want to do two foot by two foot pieces, don't have vacuum, that would be something to try. Use that application tape. You can get it in any vinyl thing. So, um, kind of the last thought is, you know, I've always thought of these as for being, uh, for health workers. I mean, they're the ones that need it for sure, and they're the ones that are right on the front. But there are a lot of people that are having to wear masks for their job. So, you know, I just keep a couple of them in my truck, and I went to the Ace Hardware the other day, and, the, you know, the lady was wearing a mask, and, you know, it was annoying to the back of her ears. So I've just been kind of handing them out when I go. And I tell them, you know, you're going to wash it this plastic. You can wash. I wash them up before I hand them out put them in a Ziploc bag, but, you know, people know that they're not sterile. They're, they're sort of shop clean, but not sterile. But they can wash them with soap and water, wipe them down with Clorox wipe, use hand sanitizer, whatever. But, you know, think of the people like in the post office and in Walmart and the hardware store and the grocery stores that are having to wear masks. Um, and, you know, if, hand them out but you know the, the the certainly the frontline medical workers are the ones that need it the most they're the ones who wear it all day long they're the ones that can't take their mask off but but also think about you know as we're cutting along think about other people that have to wear a mask so that's my that's my thoughts after a while you know once i've started cutting full sheets i may have a little bit more feedback and a little more ideas and once people i hear from more people that are using them you know i may change the design i may make them straight i may who knows what but this is, these are my thoughts so far.